Saving the state of a game is essential to remember the progress of a player. For example, in this project, we can move this ball around. Every time we restart the game, the position of the ball is reset. Instead, we want to save our progress in the game and recover it next time we restart the game. One solution for this issue is to save the game data in a file. To do so, you can use the config file class in Godot, or you can save the game data in a JSON file, or you can save the game data in a binary serialized format. These are some of the common ways to save the game data. Saving the game data using the config file class is especially useful if you want to store settings or small amounts of data. The config file is divided into sections. The name of each section is written in squared brackets. Inside each section, you will find some key value pairs. Now let's define two functions, a save function and a recover function. And let's connect each of these functions to the pressed signal of the save and recover buttons. To save the data, start by making a new instance of the built-in config file class. Then we can use the setValue method by passing the section name followed by the key value pair that we want to insert into this section. We are going to put the x and y position values in the bowl section. Finally, we should write all of this data into a file and we should pass the path of the file. Now when we run the game and click save, we should see that the configuration file contains the x and y positions in a section called ball. To recover the data back into the game, we can use the load method on the config file instance and pass the path of the file. If the file is successfully loaded, we can use the getValue method to access the x and y values from the ball section. This time when we run the game and click the recover button, the ball is moved to the position it was in when we last saved. Another way to save the game data is to use JSON. It stands for JavaScript Object Notation and it can represent structured data as key value pairs. It is similar to a dictionary in Godot. For example, we can use a dictionary to store the x and y positions of the ball, and we can convert the dictionary to a JSON string using the JSON stringify method. Finally, we need to write this data to a file, so we can use the open method of the file access class to open a file. We need to pass the path of the file that will be created or edited, and we need to pass the mode. In our case, we are going to open the file in write mode. To write the data to the file, we can use the store line method. This will append the string to the file. It is a good idea to close the file when you do not need it anymore. When we run the game and click save, we should see that the file now contains the x and y positions in JSON format. To recover the data back into the game, we can open the file in read mode. Then, we can use the getAsText method to read the file as a string. At this point, we can close the file since we do not need it anymore. Then, we can use the parseString method and this should return the data as a dictionary. This will make it easier to access the x and y positions of the ball. Now when we run the game and click the recover button, the ball is moved to the last saved position. Saving the data in its binary format usually gives the smallest file size compared to using JSON or config file. We can use the store var and get var methods of the file access class to store the data as an array of bytes. To start, we can use the open method of the file access class to open a file in write mode. We are going to write the data in a .dat file. Then, we can use the store var method to write the position of the ball to the file. Now if we run the game and save, we may not find the file. This happens because Godot doesn't show that files by default. To see the file inside Godot, we can go to the editor settings 
and we can add the dat extension to the list of visible extensions. Now we should see the dat file, and we can see its size. To recover the data back into the game, we can open the file in read mode. Then, we can use get var to get the next value from the file, which in our case is the position of the ball. Now when we run the game and click on the recover button, the ball is moved to the last saved position. So far we have covered three common ways to save games in Godot, but when should we use one over the other? Config file is ideal for saving game settings and configurations. JSON is ideal for saving data in small to medium sized games. Binary serialization is ideal for larger games, where smaller file sizes is crucial. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.